You're nine days away from the August 31st deadline. Will you extend that deadline, or what, what is your thought process on extending the evacuation operation? There's discussions going on among us and the military about extending. Our hope is we will not have to extend, but there are going to be discussions, I suspect, on how far along we are in the process. But this morning, the Taliban declaring the deadline will not be extended. Joining me now is Ronald Reagan Institute Director and former Deputy Assistant Secretary of Defense, Roger Zakheim. Roger, thank you for being here this morning. What does this mean? Because, again, Biden and company are deferring to the Taliban over and over again. When John Kirby, the um, Pentagon spokesman last week, what was asked about the extension past the August 31st deadline, he said that would require additional conversations with the Taliban. As the Wall Street Journal asked this morning, how long are we going to continue to allow the Taliban to dictate U.S. strategy to secure the safety of Americans and our allies in that country? Yeah, I mean, you put your finger on it. The issue is not a the deadline and the extension that we may need. The issue is that we're at the mercy of the Taliban. That's the problem. That was a problem with President Biden's decision uh, to pull out. Uh, that's the problem with this whole framework that the United States is not master of its own destiny here, but has to defer to this rogue regime. So where do we go from here? What do you expect to hear um, from the Biden administration this week? Because every time it's a disaster when Biden speaks and a disaster when Biden is silent. But what about on the ground in terms of, uh, again, it's we're. I was talking to a, a Afghan, uh, Afghanistan veteran over the weekend, and it it is frightening to see our, our troops kind of trapped at, at the Kabul airport. And that at some point, are we going to allow our, our troops to create uh, paths out into our corridors into the city to get um, Americans and our allies or even outside of Kabul? How do you see it progressing? Well, listen, we're, we have, we're vulnerable because we're limited to the airport. That's a function of the decision of the Biden administration. Not having Bagram Air, Bagram Air Base, for example, uh, was a key strategic capability that we do not have uh, at the time to carry out this very narrow mission of evacuating U.S. citizens and Afghans uh, who supported the U.S. military mission and our embassy there. Um, what may be happening is an extension of the perimeter to give our troops more space to operate, to make it easier to carry out that mission. But remember, not only do we have the challenge of evacuating U.S. citizens and those Afghans who helped uh, the mission of, of America in Afghanistan, but also we have the vulnerability uh, towards uh, with, with terrorist organizations. I mean, that is the kind of near to midterm challenge that we're going to face. Uh, the Taliban is a hostile regime. Uh, they paid uh, uh, Al Qaeda the ability to operate out of their territory, and that continues to be a challenge for the United States going forward that we're not going to have an answer to uh, beyond this deadline. As I was pointing out, the Haqqani Network, which we as a nation designated as a terrorist organization almost a decade ago, they're in charge of Kabul, appointed by uh, the Taliban. But also, what about the Islamic State? Like, how do you envision what goes on? Is this the terror threat from these organizations? Will that alone require more troops in the country? Yeah, the Taliban has never walked away from its support of Al Qaeda. As you mentioned, ISIS, the Al-Qaeda network. I mean, these threats remain. That is why we kept a presence, minimal as it was, of a few thousand troops in Afghanistan, so we would know where they were operating, would have the capability to take out those threats before they could operate outside uh, the borders of Afghanistan. That is no longer at our disposal. We are no longer able uh, to carry out those counterterrorism missions in the fashion that we've been able to do for the past few years. They talk about some over-the-horizon capability, but that is certainly not ideal. That is what we lost with the decision the president made by withdrawing all troops out of right. Afghanistan. We've no, uh, Roger, no, can, you can continue. I, this is something I was talking about last week, that uh, the, the idea of having these over the, we keep hearing this phrase, over, over the horizon capabilities. We, the partners that we had on the ground, as Jennifer Griffin was pointing out, and she was in uh, Afghanistan back in the early to mid-90s, 
that they have been, these partners have been abandoned. They are in hiding, they have disappeared. We do not have eyes and ears on the ground. And the over the horizon capabilities that this administration keeps talking about are literally having uh, you know, flying drones in from the Persian Gulf, drones that really don't, you know, they spend 60% of their energy, if you will, or time in the air or more, the vast majority of it, flying to Afghanistan. So in the short run, there's a terror threat. And then in the long run, there is a grave terror threat, potentially. That's one of the reasons that our NATO allies, I'd argue, are so upset is that because the terror strikes from, say, an al-Qaeda will happen in maybe European capitals on our embassies. Listen, that's certainly been the case. We've seen this movie before. Uh, this is not optimal. Um, the, the major combat operations in Afghanistan, we have to remember, concluded uh, at the end of the Obama administration and beginning of the Trump administration. What we've been doing in the years since 2016 is figure out what's the minimal footprint we could have in Afghanistan to deal with a terrorist threat, to keep our homeland safe, and to give the minimal support necessary to sustain the Afghan government. That wasn't only for the interest of the Afghan government, that was for our interest. That was the national security interest of the United States. With President Biden's decision, we've effectively lost that. It is not an ideal counterterrorism posture. In fact, it's one that makes us vulnerable uh, to the whims of the Taliban regime. This is something we learned long ago was, what was a problem and a mistake we should not repeat, one that the Biden administration has entered to, and now uh, will suffer the consequences. Roger, before we go, what can we do, though? I, again, it seems like you, you have this commander-in-chief who people more increasingly seem to think he's incompetent, but he's not listening to any, anyone in his circle, it seems like. So where do we go from here with this man in charge? Well, the deed's been done. We no longer have Bagram Air Base. We no longer have that highly developed counterterrorism footprint, which over 20 years we really refined and figured out what was the minimal effort necessary. Uh, for the near term, what we have to do, seems to me, is expand the perimeter to make sure we can get U.S. citizens out safely, uh, where we're less reliant on the Taliban, uh, that those Afghans that helped us uh, that want to seek freedom will be able to realize that freedom through the support of the United States. Right. That is the narrow military mission. Beyond that, it does look like we're going to have to be reliant on this over the horizon capability. Certainly, uh, it has all the challenges which you outlined and something that is not really proven. Roger Zakam, thank you so much for being here this morning. Thank you.